Uh, right lads, this is a question for the fifth year class um, that you had the other day. Uh, it's on it's question 9, page 172 of the book. Basically it's a planes question, so you have two planes, uh, ABC is one of them and the other one is ADE. So just by reading out the names of them you can see that they share one point in common, which is point A. And you can see that in both views. So point A is in common. Now the question is asking us to do t two things. First of all, it's asking us to find the line of intersection. So that's part one of the question. Now the line of intersection, usually in a simple question, if there was two points being shared between two planes, you just join them together and that's the line of intersection. In this case, we only have one point being shared, which is point A. So we know for certain that point A is on the line of intersection because it's common between both of the planes. What we have to do now is find a second point on the line of intersection. The most straightforward way and the easiest way of doing that is by uh, using your horizontal cut method. So what we're going to do in the elevation is we're going to draw a line that's horizontal and we're going to draw it cutting through both of the planes at the same time. You can position it anywhere as long as it's cutting through both of them. So for example, you couldn't really draw from point B because it won't be cutting through this plane here, ADE. So you have to look for a position where it's cutting through both of them at the same time. So basically you're working between this area here. So you can draw a horizontal line anywhere there. Now what I've noticed in this question is there's a little shortcut. If you uh, just take a look at point D and point E, they both have the same height. So that line is horizontal. So that can be used as a horizontal cut. But you'd be perfectly entitled to draw it anywhere else as well. I'll just use that because it is a bit of a shortcut. So point D and point E is a horizontal line. That line is cutting through both of the planes. It cuts through the plane ABC at this point and this point. And it cuts through the second plane ADE at point D and point E. Now point D and point E are already labelled because there are points on a plane. What we're going to do is we're going to label where it cuts through ABC. So we'll mark that point. We call it point 1. And we'll mark the exit. And we'll call that point 2. We're then going to find those in plan view and recreate them. So D to E is already drawn in plan view. That's the line there. So that's half the work done. The second line is going from 1 to 2. So we're going to find point 1, find point 2, and join them together. Point 1 is on the line going from A to B. So drop it down, mark it off, and label it. Point 2 is on the line going from B to C. So again, drop it down, mark it, and label it. Join 1 to 2, join D to E. What we're looking for is where they cross over each other. Now at the minute they're not crossing over each other, but if we were just to continue those lines on, they will cross over each other. They cross over at that point there. That point is on the line of intersection. So now we have a second point on the line of intersection. We have point A and we have the one we've just found. If we join them together, we'll have drawn our line of intersection in the plan view. Now I'm just going to zoom in. If you look at it, in a practical sense, the two planes where they cross over each other, that's where the actual intersection is happening. Like, there's no intersection happening out here. So there's no point in drawing that part of the line of intersection heavy. We just draw heavy the part that overshadows both planes at the same time. And we're doing it by joining these two points together. So my line of intersection in plan view will be from point A out as far as there. I'll label that as line of intersection. Now I stopped it uh, on a point that is crossing over the line from B to C. So to find it in elevation, I'm just going to bring that point straight up, look for where it crosses over the line going from B to C, and then join that back to A. And that red line is the line of intersection. Now, that's part one of that question. The second part is asking you to find the dihedral angle between the two planes. 
you have to have your line of intersection to answer that. So you had to answer part one in order to answer part two after it. We have the line of intersection. The steps that I'm going to do here are the ones that you always follow to find the line of intersection. Sorry, to find the dihedral angle. The first thing you do is you take your line of intersection in plan view and you look perpendicular to it. The reason you look perpendicular to it is because you want to get a true length of it. So we're going to create an auxiliary view. I'm using my adjustable for this because it's a bit handier than using sliding set squares. And I'm going to look out 90 degrees against that line of intersection for my first auxiliary. So I create an X1, Y1 line. I bring out all of the points at the same angle. So A, B, C, D and E and the line of intersection. Everything comes out. And because this is the first auxiliary I'm drawing, I'm going to go back two views from my heights. So that means my heights come from my elevation. So take them one at a time. When you start kind of trying to skip steps, you end up making mistakes. So I just in the habit of taking one at a time, mark it off, and label it. That way I don't get confused about what's what. So you're bringing every one of them out. You're labeling them as you're going through them. And the whole purpose of this is to get a true length of the line of intersection. Same way if you had a pencil in front of you and you wanted to see the true length of it. Well, you'd look straight at it. You'd make a 90 degree angle to the pencil. So that's just what you're doing here. So, we have all our points found. We join them up. So I'll draw A, B, C first. And then I'll draw A, D, E. That's that auxiliary finished. I'm bringing up my line of intersection. I have point A found. Bring up the other end of it. Look for where it crosses over B, C. That's it there. And I find that if you can keep the line of intersection as a red line, it just makes it easier, especially for an examiner, just to kind of reference it from view to view to see you're doing it correctly. So that's the first auxiliary done. Now I'll just go over that in black just so it is a bit more obvious on the video. That's the first step done. There's two steps in this. The second step now is to, after you get the true length of the line of intersection, what we've just done, is to look down straight through it for a second auxiliary. So it's as if you're looking down the barrel of a gun. This is to create your second auxiliary. So the line of intersection, look straight down. You can look downwards or upwards. It doesn't matter what direction you're going. I'm going to go downwards because that's where my space is. So again, the adjustable is quite handy here because it guarantees you all your lines are at the same angle and it's just less hassle than sliding set squares. So they all come down. You'll need an X2, Y2 line so you can start marking heights off it. So just go turn your adjustable over, go 90 degrees to what you're going down at. And now again, you're going to have to get heights. So you have to remember your rule, go back two views. We're here in the second auxiliary. If I go back one, I'm in the first auxiliary. If I go back two, I'll be going down to the plan view. So we're measuring from the X1, Y1 line back down to the plan view. There's a lot of empty space there. So what I would do is create a measuring line or a datum line, some people call it. You'll see it called that in the book a lot. So that just involves taking your X1, Y1 line and sliding it down closer to the plan view. You can use that as a measuring line. So let's take the measurements now. I've me moved my measuring line down so it's touching point D. So that means that point D here is on the ground. And transfer up all the measurements again one by one because otherwise you can lose track of them very easily. Label them as you're doing them. And Usually I find it helps just do them in order. Easier to keep track of them that way. Let's 
C and finally point E. Now, join up in the same order, so ABC, it's going to appear as a straight line. They're all in line with each other. And then secondly, ADE, again, it's going to appear as a straight line. So what happens is, they look like they make an X shape, they're crossing through each other. You can mark off any of those four angles as your dihedral angle, it doesn't matter which one you label. They're all technically dihedral angles. If for any reason the points here weren't working out to you, within reason, now if there was an awful gap between them, you've, gone some per, you've done something wrong. But if there was like a mill or two where they weren't joining up, such as ABC, not joining in exactly a straight line, just kind of compensate for it. Move the pencil along a little bit, just get them into a straight line. Because the examiner realistically isn't going to notice that if you just manipulate it a little bit. So hopefully that helps you lads. Um, and go through that question yourselves.